Okay, so you want to create some two-dimensional curves. No problem. First thing we're going to type is polyline. Polyline is the command you'll probably use most often in Rhino. We're going to start by typing polyline, and then we're going to type W0 to go to world origin. Press enter, and now we can create a line. We can do anything. We can go along any orientation or any axis. We can move on angles and so forth. If you want to lock to a specific angle, you can put to that angle and then press tab, and then you'll be locked to that angle. It's very easy. We can lock down again, and now we can create a closed curve. If we type what, it'll say that it's a closed curve or a closed polyline. And that's really important. The next thing we can do is we can create some primitive shapes, like a rectangle. With a rectangle, we can just do one, two, and push down. Or we can do a rectangle again, and if we hold shift, we can kind of do it freestyle. Next thing we can do is a circle. A circle is the same thing. You do it from the center, and there you go. You can move it using that, and then if we overlap the two of them, we can do this thing called curve boolean. Curve boolean is really good because we can create a boundary between the two of them. First thing we're going to do is we're going to select this and click delete input all. So that means all the input curves are going to go away. Now when we click the outside and press enter, we have just the boundary between the two. It's pretty interesting. From there, we can create an offset. So if we type offset, we then get this preview to see how we might want to offset. This is really good for creating walls. We can change the distance, 10 feet, or even to 20 feet if you really want to, but be careful because sometimes it'll break a little bit. You can press T and it'll give you a freestyle preview of how far you might want to do it. And you can even do both sides if you want by pressing B. These are all displayed in the uh, display menu bar over here. Next thing you can do is you can adjust the control points. If you click a curve, you can move a point and this is how you can create a variable poche space. There you go. The next thing we're going to do are curves. We can press type in curve, and this will allow you to do any sort of shape, and it'll make it a smooth shape. But there's something to note, is that there's other ways to create curves. So in this case, it doesn't actually go through the points. Another way to make it go through the points is by typing interp curve. A curve that's interpolated will always ensure that it travels through the points. Now, if we want to rebuild these curves, we can see right now, if we type rebuild, this will actually change the number of points there are in the curve. We see that right now there are 10, but we can actually make it a 20, which won't really do much except for add more geometry, or we can actually make it have five. In that case, it'll actually reduce the geometry and make it a different shape, like so. Or we can actually reduce the geometry and the degree, and the less the degrees, the pointier it is. There you go. So now at every point, it's, it uh, comes into contact and, it's a, and it has a corner. And we can do the same for the, uh, the non-interpolated one. Voila. Something else you might want to try is fillet and chamfer. We can do it. We can just copy the shape by holding alt. So now if we type fillet, maybe we can type 10 feet. And then so we can see our radius, that's in inches. There we go. If we type chamfer, same thing can be applied, but it's a chamfer. You might want to do something with between two curves. You might want to join these two shapes, but maybe it's not very clear, but you want it to be mathematically tangent. So we can type is blend curve. Blend curve, you can select both the curves and you can create tangency or a join by position or by curvature. There's tons of options and they don't even have to be the same. Pretty neat. Now let's say you want to create a door. Let's say you want to make it a circle door because it's cool. What you can do, there you go. We can type our curve boolean command. There's a nice looking door. Now let's say we want to have a bunch of these doors because we're in some weird Roman amphitheater. We can type array and then we can type in the x direction 20 because we want 20 doors. In the y direction we don't want any. In the z direction we don't want any. And then there you go. There's an array of doors. But let's say you have other geometry that actually isn't like that and instead it's all over the place. Let's say you brought it out and it's all over the place like this and you want it to all be the same. We can type distribute and x. And that will align it all in the x-axis to be equally distributed. The same thing can apply for the y-axis. So if we want to have some things... distributed along the y-axis, these will now be equally distributed along the y-axis, just like that. And the same can apply for the z-axis. Okay, so now let's say you want to align these all in the same orientation. We can, type, we can select them all, type align, and then we can say, for instance, we want to align them to their left. 
there we go. Or if we want to align them, we can align them to the right. In this instance, it doesn't make any difference because it's just taking the leftmost point or the rightmost point and getting them all aligned. We can take this, array it a bunch of times. We can even group these. And then what happens is in this case, if we want to align this one down to all these ones, we can select it. Oh, we want to get these guys too. We can select it, type align, and then press bottom. There's tons of different ways you can align and they're all available here. Concentric, horizontal center, left, right, top, vertical center. But we're going to stick with bottom. There we go. Just like that. Thanks for listening, everybody.